That old dusted trail down south, it ain't for the faint of heart. You best keep your eyes peeled for fires and critters alike. This has just made things exponentially more complicated. Well, if those don't seem to get you, that canyon just might. This canyon is so remote. I didn't even see footprints coming down. Some, but let me tell you, find a way to survive, and a man can make a mighty fine living, painting up some of the prettiest gems the Southwest has to offer. This could not be going any better. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Healer. Alrighty, this is one heavy pack, but I ain't no slouch. We have packed, practiced many, many a time, and I think we are right at weight. Everything I might need and then some to get us through this adventure. But we'll go over what's in the bag a little bit later. For now, let's uh, go to sleep. We got a long drive. And first of many travel montages, take one. I think this is a, a As we're cutting through this big open desert section, I'm realizing this drive is a lot longer than I thought. We are just about halfway and hopefully we can get there soon. Let's keep on trucking, baby. Let's go. Well, my worst fear has uh, just uh, come true. There is a massive fire up the Gila, the West Fork, the one I was trying to go to. And now it's time for a plan B, five hours later. Woohoo! let's go, yes! Let's try this again. What a ridiculous start to this trip. I am so glad to be out of this damn truck and on whew, some flat ground. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I tell you, we got a couple things we need to do before we get at the trail. So let's get on with that and yeah, let's start this adventure, man. Let's go. sitting in a car for too long. Last but not least, the insurance policy so they can at least maybe track down my body if and when things go wrong. It's really nice to see that there's no fires on this side of the Gila. I was driving in this morning, man, it was kind of Kind of freaky, reminded me of Idaho a lot. It had fire departments from Wyoming, Idaho, Montana, everybody was coming to the party to put out some fires, which is always good to see. So hopefully that side goes out soon and we can go hit the West Fork sometime. That'd be ideal. <laughs> so in the meantime, fingers crossed, white water's the ticket. Fingers crossed. I'm not quite sure how far we just hiked down. All I know is that we hiked down a buttload. That hike up is gonna be nasty. The elevation drop has been nothing but drop the entire time. So, oh God, future self is gonna be hating this. But yeah, I can hear the river. I don't know if you guys can. That, that is Whitewater Creek right there, baby. That's it, folks. That is it. Well, I think we might've just found 
the flattest piece of real estate in the entire canyon. Let's go. That is gonna be home for the next few days. Now this isn't exactly level, but this is probably the best spot we're gonna find here for a while. The canyon is so steep on either end. I think we need to take this and, and run with it. This is, this is good. So I'm gonna clear this up first before we put our tent down. You gotta always have the sleeping pad, especially on ground like this. Well, it ain't Shangri-La, but it's gonna have to work. This will be our home in the Gila for the next two days. You know what? I'm not, uh, I'm not too picky, so I don't mind. But I think, I think I'm gonna take a quick siesta. It's been, believe it or not, it's been a long day. <laughs> I'm gonna lay down while the sun's still high in the sky. Try and catch a few Z's before we catch a few G's. I cannot tell you how good laying down felt. That was amazing. Just a few more things we gotta take care of before we can actually go and do some fishing. First off, I'm going to hang my bear bells. This is a little uh, paracord setup that I made. Just gonna put it around the perimeter. Helps me hear a little something different, maybe uh, a sound not in nature. So if anything were to get into my perimeter, I'll be able to hear it and have a better idea which way they're coming from before I gotta give them the sauce. It's funny how something just as simple as a couple bells on some paracord can make you feel a lot more secure. When you can hear them, you know, breaks up the natural noises like the wind and the river. You hear that, you're like, what in the world is that? Hopefully the wind doesn't set it off tonight. That would be a mega, mega downer, get me super spooked for nothing. But I think it's a good system regardless. And going off of that, we need to do a couple more things to, uh, yeah, get ready for this evening bite. First thing is we gotta go hang our bear bag. New Mexico is not known for its crazy population of black bears, but they're still here, they're still roaming around, and you don't wanna risk it. I certainly don't wanna risk it, so I'm gonna get this out, find a nice tree to hang it in, and uh, yeah, keep our dinner nice and safe away from those bears. And then, and then after that, all we gotta do is pack up our bag and head to the stream, see what we can't find. We got some neighbors, that's pretty cool. That was a big old lizard, whatever that was, dang. You always gotta try and find that medium ground. Not too far away from your camp, but just far enough to hang up your food bag so those bears stay away. And I'll tell you, kinda hard to find a good tree. I think this one might be our best. We're gonna give it a couple tossy tosses and see if we can't <laughs> get this bad boy up there. Nice. There's our camp. There's our bear bag. Not too far away, but just far enough. Oh, oh, oh! That's a fish, folks. That's a fish. By no means a giant, but that, ladies and gentlemen, is a gila trout. Oh my lanta. All the planning, all the prepping, all the monkey wrenches thrown at our way, that little fish right there, that is what makes it worth it. That is New Mexico, the gila trout. That is my first official gila trout here in the great state of New Mexico and my first trout on my brand new ant. This beautiful piece of glass has just caught its first of hopefully many, many fish. And you know what that means. We gotta do the honors of cutting off the plastic. Ooh, so fresh, so clean. It's cold. That right there is a high country pot of gold. That is a money, money run. If there's gonna be big fish, I'm thinking they're gonna be in there. Oh, that was it, that was a nice fish. That's a better fish, let's go. Yes! 
Yeah, let's go. That's what we're after. <laughs> Now that is much closer to the caliber of fish we're wanting out of here. That is so sick. On the dry, t I love high mountain fishing. This is the best. It is absolutely the best. Oh, yes. Let's get him back. I know it's kind of loud right here, but this is what we got him on. It's a black and purple ant of some sort. And it, oh man, it got clobbered. I love to see that. Let's keep moving up, I bet there's some more. Yeah, there we go. Not as good as that last one, but still pretty nice fish. Yeah, he came up and gave that a real nice smack. Not a juvenile, but not a, uh, not a mondo, that's for sure. Beautiful nonetheless. Oh my gosh, these gila are something else. This could not be going any better. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe we're actually finding fish. Somebody been here. Oh. Dang it! What I'm noticing is that these takes remind me so much of high country cutthroats in the streams. They come up, they marinate, they barely even grab it, grab it, and maybe they'll let it go, grab it again, and then go down. They take their sweet time. I'm having, having trouble adjusting to the hook set. I'm used to those, those splashy driftless browns, man. They come up, they don't hesitate, they smack it. Let me see if I can set you guys up for a better view of that. Oh, that was it, that was it. There it is, there it is. Easy, easy tub muffin. This little one was playing with me, man. What are you doing, where are your friends? Where are your big friends? All right, see you, sir. And he gone, tell ya. But do you see what I mean? Do you see how they were coming up and just kinda like, I might not take this one. I'll take the next one. And then go, oh, little rats, little, little rats. That's a much better fish. They're sitting right on this shadow, right where the sun meets the shadow. That's where I cast it, he blasted it. Man. That, was, that was super cool. And I saw some more chasing him too. Let's do one more cheeky gila, gila grip and grin on this guy. That is seriously so cool. Oh man, that was so cool. What was that? That was textbook. This evening, Gila Trout Bite is hot. They are not stopping, and I am I am all over. I'm loving it. Check out that fin, that is intense. These are, these are just an incredible trout. Let's get it back. My Onyx backcountry's telling me there's a trail just up the ways. Only problem is, I'm not seeing any trail. That looks nasty and steep. We might risk it for the biscuit, just it'll make getting back to camp a little bit easier, a little bit faster, and that way we know where we started for tomorrow. Because I'd like to pick up right where we left off. We seem to really be getting into the Gila action. This is just a taste test, so this is just an appetizer for the full send, which is gonna be tomorrow. 
So yeah, let's uh, huck it back. We got a lot to do before we can lay our head down tonight. So come on, let's go, let's go. <laughs> a, that's deep. Shale is slippery and very sharp. I got stuck good, ouch. We're uh, risking it for the biscuit and paying the price right now. Mm -mm -mm. Woohoo! And we are bandaged up. Good thing I don't have enough freaking liquid in my body to be bleeding all that much. Ay, yeah, yeah. This this hill section is killing me. This doesn't suck. It's just it's gonna be a little annoying. A little annoying throughout the rest of the trip. But eh, it's the cost of doing business, I suppose. I shouldn't be freaking sunning it up a uh, 45 degree, right? I should be smarter next time. And I think next time I'm gonna take the creek. <laughs> Son of a bitch. That was a sketch level. Nine out of 10. But that view is a perfect 10. Diamond, diamond D. Wow. Didn't get much more healer than that. We're not out of the woods yet, but that was, that was super sketchy. I don't think I'll ever do that again. That was stupid and uh, yeah, that shell is loose and sliding, tumbling. Woo! That's scary, 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 scary. Well, let's keep going. Okay, we made it back to camp. Took a quick bath, gotta, gotta get the, the dirt and gunk off, but we're a little behind. That sun is uh, well on its way to yesteryear, and we've got, uh, we've got some things to do. Order of operations is key, though. I'm gonna start by getting all my camera equipment charging, then I'm gonna start on dinner, then I'm gonna do a more thorough bath, change, and then, hopefully, dinner will be ready by then, so let's get after it right now. You gotta love when the place is fully furnished. We've got a nice big old slab of rock here that we're gonna use as our kitchen table of sorts as we get our meal all prepped up. We're gonna do a little chicken teriyaki tonight with a warm orange and maybe a cliff bar if I'm feeling frisky afterwards. I'm still pretty new to this whole backpacking thing. But one thing I will suggest, anyone out there looking to get into backpacking, get yourself a jet boil. These things are no joke. The simplest, easiest ways to cook food, you know, boil water for coffee, whatever it is. Especially in a place like Fire Country, I'm literally, I'm gonna be sleeping on a bed of tinder and one spark, just like that, could set this whole section of the Gila blaze, like we saw earlier today. Yeah, get yourself a jet boil, they're the bomb. <laughs> no free shout outs, damn it. <laughs> you know, a lot of people talk badly about these freeze dried meals, Mountain House, Prime Optimum Fuel, whatever, you know, whatever brand company it is. But you gotta understand, they, they just kinda are what they are. They're gonna be high in sodium, high in calories, and uh, yeah, they're gonna kinda taste like glue sometimes. But it, it kinda gives you the, the stuff you need when you're out here burning off all that we did today. And you know, think of all the salt and minerals we poured through our bodies, sweating our asses off in the <laughs> New Mexico heat. So, you gotta just kinda tape your expectations. I'm looking forward to it. I think this is gonna be really good. So let's get our boiled water in there. Oh yeah, baby. Here's another big hack when you're out in the backcountry. A little body wipe action. They come, again, in so many different brands, but just for the peace of mind, giving you the sense of, uh, you know, cleanliness before you go into the, the, the sleep realm is always nice, I like it. Again, these kind of are what they are. They're expensive for a one-time use, but when you're out here, especially after today, like I, you know, cut the hell out of my finger, I wanna have a nice clean body and be able to uh, rest up and recoup and get dirty again tomorrow. It is hard to put a value on fresh, dry clothes. This is, this is living large, folks. The, the, the chariot has come. Now, I still gotta let my, my food rest a little bit, so let's address this, this nasty cut. With a, with a little cut like this, I, I know, it's, it's, a, it's mostly a cut, but it's, it is pretty deep. Ooh, G. Manelli. Okay, uh, parental advisory warning. Yeah, you can kind of see it's a little deep. I'm downplaying it. It's it's a nasty cut, and I think it's always important to have some sort of first aid, some sort of medical supplies. I carry one in my fishing bag no matter where I am, let alone backpacking in the middle of flipping nowhere's canyon. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take out my 
kit, let's just call it, my med kit, and kind of go through some of the key items that's going to really come into play when dressing this and, and kind of uh, getting it on the stages of healing and away from any bad juju. I know this may look like your everyday average Walmart first aid kit, but let me tell you, I've kind of pimped it out a little bit. First and foremost, Ace Athletic Tape is probably the best bandage out there. It is sticky and it'll, it'll wrap around damn near anything and you can put down pressure. And that's what I did with this. I put down pressure quick and as you can see, the bleeding stopped or I'm so dehydrated. Either one. <laughs> we've got the all important bag. And in here we've got skin glue, Neosporin, plenty, plenty of Tylenol. If you, you know, sprain or break an ankle out here, you could be really, really in trouble. We've got Benadryl for bites, and then also super glue, super glue. So that'd be perfect for this wound if the skin glue isn't stout enough. So what I'm gonna do tonight is I'm just gonna put some Neosporin on it and try and avoid busting that seal. I'm gonna sleep on it, see if I can't get it to kind of start in the way of healing, at least kill all the bad bacteria, because you know, I only gave it a little kissy kiss, got the blood out, you know, who knows what's in there. So that's what the Neosporin is for, and hopefully that'll do the job, and then tomorrow, We'll wrap it up real thorough. Probably skin glue it too, make sure it is sealed tight so we can adventure all the way up this canyon and catch all the gila trout. <laughs> so sorry for that quick aside. I just think it's important to have in your, well, adventure kit, be it fishing, hiking, backpacking, whatever it is. So yeah, let's uh, get working on this and I think dinner might be ready soon. I'm, I'm freaking starved. Oh, now this, this is living large, folks. We got ourselves a beautiful backpacking meal, let me tell you. I'll be honest, it's a bit soupy. I put too much water in, and that's, that's on me. I'm a bad chef. <laughs> but I'm so dang hungry right now, I could probably eat a horse and, and then some, so. Wow, oh my gosh. You can really taste the chicken. Looks like we got some peas, carrots, peppers, rice. Eh, a little, little crunchy, but we can deal. The chicken is really good, though. God damn. Mmm. I don't care what they say, Mountain House. 10 out of 10, chicken teriyaki. That's a winner in my book. <laughs> Tune in for more food reviews for Mike. I'm being completely honest, sitting here in the Gila, eating a beautiful mountain house meal, it's kind of a surreal feeling for me. I'm sure there's a lot of you fishy folk out there who have spent just as much time daydreaming about all the different trout species or salmon species that you can target on the fly. And I think it goes without saying that the Gila trout, it's gotta be at the top of that list. Not only because of how rare the species is, or was, I should say, they're, they're coming back in, in quite, quite the numbers these days, but just how treacherous this landscape is. It's, it's amazing to think that a little trout can live in a place like this. And I think I'm gonna go over kind of the life history and maybe more of the uh, taxonomy of the Gila trout in the next video. But for now, I, I think I'm gonna cut it here. It's been a long day, trials and tribulations. By all seasons, always finding some stupid shit <laughs> to get myself into. <laughs> but I've got a mountain house meal to finish and a cliff bar, and I'm gonna hit the sack. So, all you OG subs, all you all you Driftless folks, all, all you folks on the Instagram, the Discord, YouTube, thank you so much for sticking around. Thank you so much for sticking around in the, the new environment I find myself in. It means a lot, and I really, really appreciate it. And, I hope that uh, maybe these videos can help you on your adventures, your endeavors one day and yeah, give you a better idea of what to expect when coming to the Gila. So with that being said, when you do find yourself deep in a canyon <laughs> in the Gila National Forest, make sure to keep your feet in the water. And until next time, folks, tight lines. Oh, those of you tuning in, this might be a familiar scene. We just went through and made an excellent, excellent breakfast. Hot.
hot, hot coffee and some thick oatmeal. This is gonna go right to the dome and get us, uh, get our engines rolling today. Cause I'll, I'll be honest, it's a little chillier than I thought. You know, going to bed last night, I was splayed out. I was hot as hell. I think it was in, probably still in the 70s. And uh, I woke up and I was all bundled up. I had my jacket on somehow. <laughs> I was for a reason. But I think our game plan for today is to take the creek upstream again and go past where we had fished just a little bit last night. I'm thinking that uh, the further we go up, maybe the more isolated the pools will get and maybe some bigger fish. Because as we kept going up, the more pools that we found, the more fish that we found, which is pretty sweet. So I think I'll rig up both my three weight and my five weight so I have a little bit more versatility and yeah work our way on up the canyon and this time I am not hiking out of the canyon I'm just gonna take the creek home I'm gonna finish up breakfast real quick and yeah we'll start getting uh, camp set up put away and onto the onto the fishing Kind of feels like a slow start, but we are almost there, I promise. We've got our fishing bag packed, we've got our main big backpack prepped and ready to go. The last thing I need to do is get my first aid out and uh, really fix up this finger. I don't know if you guys remember from uh, yesterday, but we, we had a spill and it was pretty nasty. It cut me good and it cut me deep. You know, it never hurts as bad in the moment, but this morning I woke up and it was throbbing and it hurt like hell. So hopefully the Neosporin we put on it last night did its job and now, all we gotta do is put some skin glue on it, seal it up nice and tight, put some more athletic tape on it, and call it a day. That's really all we can do. There we go, good as new. Barbless pops right out, and this ant muncher breaks the skunk. Thank you very much, Mr. Gila. Thank you, indeed. Let's get him back. Even though we just got one out of this pool, and it seemed like last night it was a lot of one and done. So you get one, and then you'd be done. What I'm gonna try is I'm gonna grab my dry dropper rod, because this is a nice deep run. Go through a couple times and see if there's any big lazy boys sitting on the bottom. <laughs> Yes, let's go. Looks like the Gila Trout. I have a taste for the Copper John too. You gotta love that. And that's exactly what we wanted. Let's slip this little guy back. I apologize deeply for saying Gila. I know it's Gila. I'm a Midwest gringo. Lo siento, my bad. Gila, Gila, doesn't matter. They are so much fun. That is, ah, oh, that's a great way to start the morning. Yo, he is a chunky, plumpy boy. He's been eating well. Good job, buddy. <laughs> See ya. Not sure if it can kind of see through, but there's kind of a haze in the air. That's our smoke. That's still from that fire that's further east to us right now. I don't know if the wind shifted or, or what the deal is, but we're gonna have to keep a close eye and nose on that in case it gets worse, because 
I don't want to get ran out of here by a fire, that's for sure. Just a little guy. Wow, this one still has the par marks on it. It is gorgeous, look at him. Got it, I love those par marks, woo. All right, <laughs> let's get him back. So this hole is officially where we stopped yesterday. So everything above here is gonna be brand new water. Hopefully, some bigger boys, some bigger fish. Yeah, let's, uh, let's keep hacking on up. Oh, oh, there he is. <laughs> A little eager there, don't you think? That's uh, that's about the size of your head there, buddy. <laughs> Crazy little gila. See ya. Finally had an eager one. Wanted to come up and give it a smack. That's super sweet. We'll get him back. Nice. <laughs> this canyon section is so much fun. It's worth, it's worth every step that this hike out's gonna be, I'll tell you that. Or at least that's how I'm feeling right now. <laughs> so I changed up my dry fly to a stimulator. I lost that black ant in the tree. It, it was so high I couldn't get it, which really sucks. But, you know, stimmy works just as good. They seem to be keying in on something a little bit bigger. And that's why our dry dropper dry fly, they're smacking it, but the hook's a little bit too big for them. They're not really grabbing it. They're more just like stunning it, I, I suppose, so that it, Rounds and then they can grab it. I, I don't know what these geel are doing. They're crazy. They're mad lads I don't know what the hell but I do know we need to shake and bake and get back in there because I think there's I think there's just a ton stack of lag Loon sponsor me. Come on y'all Betty Crocker up in this canyon I'll be honest, I didn't even see this one. I was going to cast again. He came up and smacked it though, that's hilarious. Look at the little orange bellies. How beautiful is that? And that tail, holy cow. Desert gorgeous right there. Loon, hit me up man. I'm Betty Crocker in the kitchen right now, shaking and baking. Little dabble, do ya? There we go. I don't know if y'all can hear that. Man, that, sound, that, that sounded like a helicopter. I'm getting, oh man, I'm getting spooked. The, the haze is getting a little bit, a little bit stronger. Boy, I do not want to get trapped by a fire. That's starting to really spook me. Ah, what to do, what to do? Man, I'm starting to get so spooked. I'm, I'm hearing helicopters, I'm seeing more smoke. The winds are all shifty. Uh, this is a recipe for disaster, but I don't know. So, I mean, it could be miles and miles away from me. I don't want to just dip, and uh, but I don't want to get stuck either. What to do? The other problem is that my dumb angler brain is saying, oh, the geeler are getting bigger, look at this guy. Wow, he is pudgy plump boy. Come on now. Okay, so it is just 11 o'clock right now. We've been fishing for a few hours, been catching a lot of fish. I will say, if the conditions continue to get worse and the, the smell of smoke and you know the, the hearing of helicopters and planes continues, I think I'm gonna have to go. And I, I feel like a wuss, but then I also kind of feel dumb. I'm not used to New Mexico backcountry. That is not my forte. So risking it back here, you don't want to do that. Even for the Gila trout, you don't want to risk it. And I think it'd be better to be safe than sorry. So I'm gonna keep an eye on the clock, keep an eye on the sky, and ears open for any more helicopter activity. Cause that'll kind of give us an idea of uh, where they're going and what they're, uh, <laughs> what they're trying to see. Oh, uh, fires, man, they're killing me.
don't know if y'all can see that, but kind of the distortion or, or the haze, that's actually smoke. And it, uh, it seems to be getting thicker. This, this sucks, man. Right. Just barely got to set the hook. Woo. Oh, and he's gone. Fucking high country trout out of pocket water. There's not much better than that. That's like the pinnacle. Okay, enough for asking this guy. Let's get him back. Alrighty, quick fire update. It is right at noon. I haven't noticed any significant changes. And the smell of smoke, it's not as strong as it was earlier. That could just be the shifting winds. I'm not sure. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna watch for another half hour, keep my eyes and ears open and my nose for any significant changes. But I think right now is a perfect opportunity for Future Mike to take it away and talk a little bit more about the history of the Gila Trout and why they are just so dang special. So without any further ado, Future Mike, go on, take it away. The Gila Trout. Now, you better say that correctly, or you're gonna have a lot of armchair anglers quite perturbed. Gila. It's not Gila, it's not Gila, it's not Gila, Jula, whatever. It's pronounced Gila. <laughs> so, I deeply apologize for all the times in this video I mispronounced Gila. My fault, lo siento. And I'm gonna apologize further because I'm not a biologist and I'm not a historian, so I really have no leg to stand on talking to you about the history of this little fish. I, I will say though, I've probably put in more research on the Gila trout than probably any <laughs> college research paper I've ever done. So take that for whatever it's worth. <laughs> but to kind of get this whole thing started, I'd like to take a look at the trout itself. Now after taking a nice long gander at these Gila trout, you might notice some similarities to our good friends, <laughs> the cutthroat and the rainbow. And in the whole scheme of things, in the, the, the taxonomy of sorts, they are essentially the same trout. The family and the genus are spot on. They are all related. So I believe it's Salmonidae oncorhynchus, oncorhynchus. <laughs> my Latin's not much better <laughs> than my pronunciation of Hila. But they are so very similar, and that's why you see a lot of the same uh, characteristics physically uh, of, of their you know, western and northern cousins. And what's really cool, what's different about the Gila trout is that they are only native to the southwest. Parts of New Mexico and parts of Arizona are the only places on, in the world where you can find these little trout. I think that in and of itself is amazing. And to kind of keep building the, the story, keep building the, the, the reasoning you should go and fish for these guys would be their very, I would say, rocky history. So let's take a look at their long history and recent history right now. A long time ago, in some ice age far, far away, we used to have salmon species running, running up every river into the interior. I'm talking deep. Years and years and years of fish coming in, fish coming out. And what has happened over time, because time does this, either some cataclysmic event, global warming, or shifting tectonic plates, a lot of these species that once moved back and forth, they like to bounce around, they got trapped. So you think of a lot of the, the, the cutthroat species in the west, you think of red band species, as well as the Gila trout and, and Apache, they got stuck, be it you know some shifting river, whatever it was. And it is so cool to see how the, the, you know, all related to this one salmon species delineated into so many different species, which brought us the Gila trout. And in the, I would say, modern history, the recent history, let's just go 150 years or so, they have kind of, they've kind of gotten the short end of the stick. Like a lot of native species of trout, we're talking overfishing, habitat destruction, introduction of non-natives, as well as a whole litany of you know, pollution and all sorts of bad stuff 
that are, you know, not the greatest thing for fragile species like the Gila, where they're, you know, very uh, keyed into their environment, only, only good at what they do. Niche, let's just say. And what's been really neat is that over the past, I would say 20 years, this fish has gotten off of the endangered species list and onto the threatened list. And you know, it's still, oh, you know, they're still threatened, dude. But what is cool is that conservation has really been at the helm of this. The New Mexico Fishing Game, as well as other organizations, have taken this bull by the horn and have opened up so many different streams to anglers like myself to go and chase this extremely cool species of trout. And there is so much. I would say more information out on the web of you know where to go, how to go, this, that, and the other. This is just a very cursory look at the Gila trout and why I think I think you should take a second look and I think you should plan a trip down to the Gila and go find some yourself. So without without further ado, let's send this back to the vid. Pass Mike, take it away. Well, I hope that little history lesson wasn't too boring and you kind of got a better idea of why the hell I'm even out here doing this and kind of why I think you should too. They're such a special trout. And uh, for those of you fishy folk that are real crazy, just like your boy, <laughs> it's so satisfying to get out here and actually chase them. So yeah, book your trip now. <laughs> That is the Gila we're looking for, man. That is fantastic. What an absolute gorgeous fish. That is so hype. He came up and, I mean, again, textbook. Sip that stimmy like it was nothing. Just all around gorgeous fish, man. That is fantastic. <laughs> yes. <laughs> woo, woo. He did a little swim by, he said goodbye, that's so cool. Oh my, yes! <laughs> Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, may I introduce you to the pool boss. Look at this fat fellow, my gosh, sir, you are tubby. Oh my goodness. Dude, that, that is my nicest Gila ever. That is fantastico, muy fantastico. Get you one last drippy two on this guy. That is phenomenal, oh my gosh. Are you kidding me right now? That is phenomenal. Oh my gosh. Well, we'll do a half hour check-in mark. Again, nothing's changed. You can see it's a little bit hazy in the background, but nothing significantly worse than it was. And it's not like the smell's gotten any worse, I guess. You can still smell that there's kind of smoke in the air, but not too bad. I don't know if I'm getting used to it by now. I can't tell. But no headaches, no blurry vision, so I'm not affected by smoke inhalation, like seriously. So I say we keep keep trucking. I was gonna say my extraction was gonna be either one o'clock or two o'clock to make it out of the canyon, you know, in a reasonable time before the sun goes down at least. So that gives us a, a little bit more time to keep going up this this awesome creek and keep getting on some better gila trout. I see one over there tailing, but there's no way I can get to him. He's way too close. Yes. 
This is almost everything you could have hoped for when coming to the Gila National Forest, man. This is a phenomenal, phenomenal fish in such a cool setting. This is insane, y'all. Oh my God. This is incredible. Okay, let's get this, uh, let's get this Gila guy back in the drink. I hope you guys can hear me. I know it's loud in this canyon, but man alive, the Gila trout are phenomenal. I, this is high country at its finest. I love this kind of fishing so much. Whoa, that's spooky. It's starting to get later in the day and I've got a nasty hike out. So I think I'm gonna make this my last straightaway. As much as, much as I want to, I, I'm that kind of guy. What's around the next bend? Ooh, what's that? Ooh, one more. Let's just go one more, one more. I'll be honest, it's been one more for the past like five. So I know I've got a pretty nasty hike down the canyon stream and then up and out with a full pack. So as much as I want to keep going after these Gila, I need to stop, put the brakes on, and, and be smart. Because who knows where the wind's shifting, where this haze is gonna lay off, or you know, if I'm gonna even be able to get out of this freaking canyon. <laughs> So anyway, this is our last run. Let's see if we can at least get one more Gila trout to send us home with a smile. Well, no dice on the last fish. That is totally fine. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna fuel up, get a little lunch in me, and then we're gonna do a full pack. Break down the rods, put the net away, and make sure that we're as streamlined as possible on this hike back down the canyon, because I, I, I really think it's gonna be a tough one. Getting up's fine, but uh, getting down, it can be a little bit more slippery, and I'm not risking going up the damn canyon again. No way. So, it's snack time, let's go. And this is gonna be cliff bar number 77. I don't know how many of these things I've scarfed down this trip, but uh, they're keeping this, keeping this temple fueled up. Sugar and sugar and sugar. <laughs> no free shout outs but far. <laughs> Following the creek down has exponentially been better than last night's trip out of the canyon. That was brutal. This is this is a cakewalk. Ooh, got a got a boulder jump our way. Ooh, out of this bad boy though. I can do that all day. So cool. That was a deep one. I didn't put that there. That's a little ominous, don't you think? I'm gonna leave that where it is. Fuck that. <laughs> Okay, we made it back to camp. Everything's hunky-dory. I think uh, all we gotta do now, do our final pack up, get the big bag loaded and locked down, and then make the uh, hellish hike out of here. I've got a few tricks up my sleeve to maybe make it not so bad, but I think it's gonna be bad <laughs> regardless, so let's get after it. Before we do make our final climb out of here, I need to make a, a little concoction, something I like to call jet fuel. Now, yeah, gasoline, diesel, it all burns, it all goes, but jet fuel, whoo, man, 
that'll get you going. The combination is two mountain ops and one liquid IV. Put it in a small container, <laughs> shake it on up, and that'll be uh, your best form of propulsion. I'm not uh, not the best with dynamics on, on all that. Physics was never my thing. All I know is this, it gets me moving. So we'll get this together, shake it around, and uh, start fueling up, baby, for this climb. Come on. <laughs> it's a little thick, it doesn't want to mix. Come on, come on. There we go. All right. All the hatches are battened down. We got the jet fuel, riding shotgun, and I think we're ready to start our ascent. Gotta use these little pockets of shade, like an oasis. A lot of this hike is all exposed. You don't have much uh, protection from the sun. It's dry and it is warm. Whew. Got uh, quite a few more switchbacks to go. So, uh, no rest for the wicked, let's keep going. I really feel like we're making good progress. I'm getting my ass kicked, I'll tell you that. Something to note that's kind of cool, I passed in another hiker all the way from Joplin, Missouri. Shout out the Midwest boys. <laughs> I was flat lander, sucking wind. Very cool to see another, uh, another hiker out on the trail. Makes me feel not so alone. <laughs> Oh my gosh, past my takeaway, the outro. I don't know if I'll have the enthusiasm when I'm at the top, so I might as well do my outro now. This has been an excellent trip. Well, you know, it is what you make it, right? Because we got to our original spot and we got burned out. It's fire season, I, I didn't even think about it. We're out west, dry, this is a tinderbox. Lightning struck and our original idea was completely blown out of the water. Not gonna lie, I was pretty pissed when we got all the way there and then had to turn around. But for a plan B, getting here, excellent campsite. I'm pretty sure I was the only Jamoke out here. I, I, I hope so, I didn't see anybody else. But I mean, this was, this is like everything I could have hoped for in a Gila Trout fantasy. We're all wrapped into one. The creek, the ambiance, the canyon, the difficulty of the hike in, the beauty, and just ah, the the how fun those gila trout are. It is so amazing, and and this was truly, truly an experience. I think I'm gonna have to make this uh, make this trip more than a few times a year because this is right up my alley. This hits that nostalgic. I mean, just out of the water. It reminds me of little Blue Ribbon Creeks in Missouri, just pocket water fishing my way up, getting to the gold. In this case, the Gila Gold. <laughs> but for those of you who have stuck around for this entire video, those of you who are new, thank you so much for following me along as I'm, you know, kind of rediscovering backpacking and fly fishing my way through New Mexico. It means a lot. And you OG subs, you know who you are. Thank you so much as always. Thank you for following me on these silly adventures. And I love hearing what you guys have to say. So get over on the Discord. Get on IG, YouTube, hit me up, let me know what's going on. I love, I love helping you guys out, and I love talking to you too. It's, it's a blast, so 
folks, whenever you're making your way to the Gila, the Gila National Forest, <laughs> make sure to keep those feet in the water. Until next time, tight lines. Mm -hmm.